Organizers say this event does not just bring fun for the people, but brings business to the vendors as well. Right here inside this truck is where all the cooking takes place on Thursdays. There's just enough room to cook up some food and sell it to the customers. Dance Fusion Studios is where you can find Tarallo on Monday and Wednesday nights. Her class is open to anyone that wants to learn a move or two. With 18 residence halls all centrally located on FSU's campus, students have no problem walking from point A to point B. Every Thursday you can find street chefs and plenty other food trucks at Lake Ella. For Seminole Showcase, I'm Brianna Batista. Drivers in Florida will save about $25 a vehicle under a rollback of the state's motor vehicle fees. Motor vehicle title and registration fees will go down in September under a bill signed into law by Governor Rick Scott yesterday. People who register late do have a 10-day grace period for paying a late fee. The state says registering online on September 1st will prevent people from being ticketed for an expired tag. Less than two weeks until tax filings are due. We'll have some tips for all of you procrastinators. Stay tuned. The state fight song has been a staple part of FSU for over 60 years now. During every football game, you'll be sure to hear fans singing along and doing the tomahawk chop to the war chant. But who's behind all of this noise? The world-renowned FSU marching chiefs are the ones responsible for performing these legendary songs to keep the tradition alive. The FSU marching chiefs are the official Florida State marching band. When the band was founded in 1939, less than 20 members were making music. Today, the band is made up of more than 400 chiefs from just about every academic department at the university. Hitting the right notes doesn't just happen. Two hours of practice almost every day helps make the performances on the field flawless. Clarinet player Molly Bradfield says keeping school, life, and the chiefs in perfect harmony is hard work. The hardest part, I think, is time management because it's, it is a lot of work to be a chief because you have to know your music, you have to know your drill, but in addition to all that, you have to do all your schoolwork and all your other activities that you might be involved in. The marching chiefs practice and focus nearly just as many days as the football players do, but you don't see the band grabbing all the headlines. On football game days, you know, they'll kind of flash to the, to the band while we're doing our halftime show or doing the pregame show, but we very rarely get like any screen time, which I think is unfair because of how much time we put into the work that we do. But Director of Athletic Bands David Plack says the marching chiefs get plenty of respect. Yeah, absolutely. I, I never feel that we don't get credit. I, I think we're, uh, I'd actually, I'd actually, uh, you know, like to thank the Seminole fans for the credit we give because I think I think Seminole fans far and away uh, really appreciate you know what we bring to game days, what we bring to the university in general. Uh, so I think it's the opposite. I think we get lots of credit, and it and, and it's just because our students do work hard. Uh, but when we hear Seminole fans speak about wanting us at away games and and doing these things, I mean that's that's the best uh, pat on the back we can get. In 1982, Sports Illustrated featured the Marching Chiefs in an eight-page spread, giving them the nickname as the band that never lost a halftime. It makes us feel great. That's, that's actually a nickname that we love. We try to live up to that every week. That just means we practice harder and we work harder every day. And all that hard work has paid off, as the Chiefs' halftime performance to Beyonce's All the Single Ladies has gone viral, and the band's finally getting the recognition they've worked for. The Marching Chiefs don't just limit themselves to performing at football games. They also hold a number of other performances to spread that Seminole spirit. We'll do uh, the Veterans Day Parade here in town. Uh, we do our PRISM concerts in December, usually, uh, in the, uh, the first week in December, which are really popular here that showcase the entire band program. Uh, we'll do Pow Wow. We'll do uh, performances at downtown Get Down in the President's House. And so uh, we try to, you know, spread Seminole spirit, you know, as, as much as we can. With every first down, with every touchdown, with every fight song being played, remember, it's the marching chiefs that keep the beat going for Florida State. For Seminole Sports Magazine, I'm Brianna Batista. The typically quiet and relaxing Lake Ella brings quite a crowd once a week. Family and friends come out on food truck Thursdays to hang out and eat food from a variety of choices. One of the trucks many people lined up for was Street Chefs. 
Comfort food with a with sort of a fresh twist. Street chefs can be described as classic American recipes with a modern approach. Aside from their nostalgic dining, street chefs is also known for their unique food names. Well, the, the hippie is named for Rebecca's best friend. The Chelsea said, I want the shepherd's pie wrap, but can you put bacon and mac and cheese on it? And so we named it after her. Right here inside this truck is where all the cooking takes place on Thursdays. There's just enough room to cook up some food and sell it to the customers. Uh, you get used to it, I think. There's definitely at first, uh, so the bigger challenge is storage. Street Chefs aims their focus on satisfying the customer and catering to their needs. It's like we'll bend over backwards to make sure you get exactly what you want at a price that's, that's affordable. And the customers, including some four-legged friends, were very satisfied, especially with the most popular dish on the menu. I got the Not Your Mama's Grilled Cheese. Is that your favorite? <laughs> yes, it's delicious. I get it every time. It was so good. What's so good about it? Just all the different cheeses and um, it's just really quality. To make sure the food truck you're eating from has been inspected, just look for the sticker on the front window. We get it inspected like 14 times a year, just about. As if eating a bunch of food isn't good enough, there's also a live band you can sit and watch while you're eating. Every Thursday you can find street chefs and plenty other food trucks at Lake Ella. For Seminole Showcase, I'm Brianna Batista. Food, live music, entertainment, and a whole lot of Seminole pride. All the essentials to hype up Florida State fans at Cleman Plaza's official tailgate party. The block party takes over downtown Tallahassee every Friday night before a home game. FSU Athletics works hard to create an atmosphere where people can come celebrate the Knolls together over good food, good bands, and good fun. But this wasn't the initial reason for starting the block party a few years ago. The purpose that we, you know, five years ago we put this together to help give people additional reasons to come to Tallahassee. A lot of the hotels require two night minimums and, and so we thought, well, we need to come up with something on Friday night for fans to enjoy. And the idea to get people to come to Tallahassee has definitely worked. Knowles from across the nation and a couple of the other team's fans make it a point to start their tailgate weekend at the block party. I come down here from Virginia Beach, okay, and I love this place. This is my school. I'm an alumni from graduate studies at Florida State University. I have enjoyed this school. I love it so much. It's the best school there is. And I think that coming down here, the atmosphere you guys have can't be no better. Southern hospitality, there's nothing better than Florida State. This type of block party is fun for all ages and has a variety of things for people to do and see. Whether you're a current student, alumni, or you're getting ready to be a future Knoll, it's tough not to have a good time on the Friday night before a home game. I think it's good to um, you know, have things like this because it unites the older generation with the younger generation, kind of just keeps everybody uh, rooting for FSU. Organizers say this event does not just bring fun for the people, but brings business to the vendors as well. Talking to some of the vendors here at Cleveland Plaza, the difference on a regular night and a night that we bring our, our event downtown is about a 300% lift in terms of business that they do in the restaurants. And enthusiasm is something you will feel at the get down, especially when the FSU marching chiefs and Florida State cheerleaders make their special appearance. Any time is a good time for the fight song. And let's not forget the tomahawk chop. This is a great place to come watch someone that's going to be really famous one day. Good, a good track record of that. We've had Jake Owen, we've had Florida Georgia Lion on this stage. Everyone knows who they are, and I could go on and on and on, but that's, that's basically what we do. We find people right before they hit it big, they play a free concert, and, and a month later we couldn't afford them to come here if we, even if we wanted to. While you may never see the same thing twice at a downtown get down, one thing remains constant. The get down will always be the place to start an FSU football weekend party. For Seminole Sports Magazine, I'm Brianna Batista.